OK, welcome back. Right, so we looked at uh, the first attribute, uh, first attitude. We will look quickly finish the second and the third <clears throat> and uh, move in quite briefly to uh, to the next uh, to the part of the next topic also. OK, so the first one we looked to us was empathy. The second one we are looking at is uh, um, uh, unconditional positive regard. OK, now. Um, when we when we see this this attru, this uh, attitude, um, it, it's important um, uh, to know that unconditional positive regard is essential to a healthy development in a relationship. Um, you will see that counselees are more inclined to accept responsibility for themselves and their behavior when they are in an environment which is not condemning or which is not combative. Okay? Uh, so unconditional positive regard, what is it? It, it helps to bring about a non-judgmental atmosphere. And this will, in turn, promote openness, honesty, and even confession. Okay? Because unconditional positive regard is non-judgmental, the counselor is also more inclined to listen to the counselee and build that relationship. So this attitude that is regarding them unconditionally, positively regarding them, helps the counselor also to empathize with the counselee. It will actually help you to empathize with your counselee. The, the counselee then, in turn, will learn to accept um, uh, to accept their faults or accept their flaws. Okay. Now, unconditional positive regard. Um, it is a vital construct, even when, when you look at it in in scripture. We are called to love others, not based on what they do, but based on God's unconditional love for us. And we read that in John thirteen thirty four thirty five. And when we take time to listen to someone else's story and accurately respond with care or with concern, we are being loving, right? So unconditional uh, positive regard, it's actually a concept in the theory of who I was talking about, someone by name, Carl Rogers, for uh, counseling for interpersonal relationship. So a need for positive regard by others uh, uh, you know, it is, is very important for someone to become really aware of themselves. So it is a quality of the counselor's experience towards the, the counselee. Okay. So um, when we look at this construct, what does, uh, we, we will look at the different aspects of it. What is uncondition unconditional? It is holding no condition of acceptance. You're not saying, I will accept you. If you are this and this, or if you are that and that, your conditions of uh, of acceptance is there is absolutely no condition. You are accepted for for whatever whoever you are, and that's if you look at that's the way the Lord sees us. He loves us. He accepts us unconditionally, not because of what we've done or who we are, but because of His great mercy, of His great goodness over our lives. Okay. Positive is, um, it is it is a sense of, the word used here is prizing. Now, what is prizing? Means, um, it means caring. You prize a certain thing so much that you care for it. You you warmly accept it when you prize something. You know, when you when you treat something as important or you prize it. Like for example, let's suppose you get a. Um, Mm, uh, what do you say? Uh, 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 a trophy, right? You keep it in your cupboard. You keep it where everyone can see it. Why? Because it's the most prized thing that's probably you've got. It has so much of value, right? So prizing is you treat it well, treat it with warm acceptance. And the last one is a regard. A regard here to mean is to care or um, respect as a person who's 
who is unique. OK, so you are regarding the aspect of your counselee, uh, not who they are, but also their experience as part of being who they are. So it means caring for them, not in a possessive way or in such a way to just, uh, you know, th that comes out hypocritically, but it means caring for them as a person who where you're giving them the permission to have their own feelings and their own experiences. That's what unconditional positive regard, uh, regard means. OK, uh, moving on. Sorry, I've lost my slides. Yeah, OK, yeah, there. moving on. Uh, it is an attitude. <clears throat> so unconditional positive regard is an attitude. It's something that you are feeling, OK, and it is it's a it's a perspective it's a mindset more than an action towards others it is it is it's saying that um, you are you, you have support you're accepting a person no matter what they value what their beliefs are what their actions are um, unconditional positive regard does not mean you are approving of their behavior please understand that it does not mean you are approving of their behavior. It, it separates what a person has done in behavior in their past from the inherent value they possess. So you are uh, regarding their value as people, their value as a person. So it's acceptance of a person no matter whatever they are or whatever they say or whatever they do. OK, um, you are treating them because of because of this. You. Uh, because um, you respect them, so you are showing an attitude of respect. You are accepting them. You are prizing them. You're also in a place where you're affirming their value, right? You're respecting and, as, uh, uh, and re accepting them, showing that they have that innate ability or innate value, right? So when you do that, um, what this person, Carl Rogers, says is you are producing a climate where there is change and where there is growth. When you accept people for who they are and for what value they are as people, they will begin to bring about change. They will begin to be moved to that place where they want to change. They want to be different. Okay. Uh, we'll move away. Okay, so why is unconditional positive regard important? Now it is so generally counselees in other relationships do the best they can to live up to expectations of others, you know, uh, or they may be very defensive, like they may wear a mask, um, you know, they may come across as somebody very, very different. But with a counselor, they are helped to be themselves and express what they want without being judged. OK, so because of that unconditional positive regard, they feel valued for who they are. Whereas in other relationships, they may be putting up defenses. And so what do they do in other relationships? They suppress their feeling and they behave as if they're happy or as if they're content. But in a counseling relationship with you as a counselor, they should be open enough. They should know that they can show their anger. They can show their sadness. They can show their confusion. They can show their frustration without being uh, disregarded for what they are feeling or what they are expressing. OK, so that's uh, that's very important for them to to come to a place of growth, to come to a place of um, uh, uh really experiencing that change okay so unconditional positive positive regard how does this actually play out what what do we look at so when when your counselee finds you are listening to their feelings what happens they become open they become honest to whatever is happening within them okay they are in an environment where they're encouraged to really uh, share their thoughts, their fears, their feelings without fear. And they're also very likely to accept themselves and take on responsibility for growth, for change. 
they learn to accept themselves and also come to a place of responsibility to to change they they take on the decision to change so that happens only in an unconditional positive regard now this is very common and uh, you know if you have dealt with children maybe your own or others the more that you assign blame to them like for example let's say if you have a child and they don't clean up their room the more that you assign blame to them and say okay you never clean your room you're always you know you're condemning them you're judging them it is uh, it's it's more difficult for them to get to the act right but let's say you're sitting and having a conversation and saying you know i do see it's really hard for you to probably keep your room clean i know it's a struggle i see that as a struggle i see that you're really fighting it out so what am i doing i'm empathizing that it is a struggle for them and then when they begin to realize that okay my mother or this person is looking at me with empathy you know and and is regarding me no matter what it is and has it put me down it's say okay you know i'm going to start i'm going to probably start doing something tomorrow maybe i can't do the whole thing maybe i'll start with this so it pushes them to a place of growth and to a place of change okay all right we'll move to the third one uh, to the last one um uh, um okay i i know i had a couple of examples but but i think we'll we'll just move in the next one is genuineness and congruence genuineness and congruence so if you look at the meaning of the word genuineness um sorry yeah so if you look at the meaning of genuineness it it is it 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 that this again becomes a, a the third aspect of of um, uh, the attitude so genuineness is where you are being true to yourself okay it is the counselor being himself and when you be yourself you're serving as a model for your counselee you're showing your counselee what it means to be um genuine to be to be right to be uh to be um to be real okay so you actually win the respect and the confidence of your uh counselee the word congruence the word congruence actually what it means is that you are the same internally as well as externally so for example um you know we are all very uh very good at putting masks we we may put a happy face but then inside we may be going through a lot of pain so in order to cover up we we have this dual uh persons outside we are one way inside we are another but in counseling one of the biggest attribute of a counselor the attitude a counselor needs to have is a, a state of congruence that is you are whatever you are on the inside is what you are on the outside okay uh because your your counselee will begin to see through um for example in my mind maybe i'm judging them and saying okay my god what a what a kind of a person this is you know how can they do this you know what are they talking about but outside i'm trying to be all empathetic it can be seen through right so or for example if you're not able to understand what your counselee is saying or not able to feel what they're going through but because you know that you should be empathetic you actually say something it will come across very very easily but what is genuineness and congruence mean if i can tell my counselee you know i'm trying really hard to understand what you're trying to say or what you're feeling but i'm sorry i'm not able to pick that up correctly could you explain this to me a little bit more or can you help me um work with me to un- help me understand what you really felt at that situation so that shows genuineness that is what shows congruence it helps the client to understand that whatever i am on the outside on my outward responses 
is matching with what I'm feeling on the inside when I'm talking to my client or to my counselee. Okay, so that's very very important to to come across when uh, in in counselling. Okay, so genuineness also shows that what you as a counsellor are feeling, the feelings that you are experiencing is something that you need to be aware of and you are living these feelings and you're also able to communicate it appropriately. For example, like as I said earlier, when you're talking to your counsellee, let's say um, maybe you had a bad day okay in your own home or in your own life you had a bad day and you're sitting with someone trying to understand their issue and you're lost because you're there genuineness is letting saying you know i'm very distracted today i've had a lot going on in my own personal life i'm really distracted and i'm trying the best to um understand so i may ask you a couple of questions to help me stay in line with you. So that's genuineness. That's helping your counselee know that you're not God, you're not you know, uh, perfect, uh, but letting them know that these, these are, you are really attempting to be with them and understand what they're going through. And because of the struggle you may be going through, you're probably not doing a very good job of it to actually say that, okay? So it's, it's the ability to be real and not to be in a place where you are putting on, okay? So there should be, in genuineness, uh, whatever you're saying or doing should match your experience. It should match what you're aware of, and it should match your communication, okay? So look at the example of this tool. Let's say an infant and an angry man. An infant, a real small baby, will truly, they're never incongruent or they're, they're never false if they're uh, um, if they are crying they show it out right if they are sad they show it out if they're happy they show it out whereas let's look at an angry man um, someone who's really angry on the outside but has put on a mask you may not really it's not genuine because he may show himself across as being calm but through his communication, he's saying some real cutting words. He's saying something really mean or something really nasty. But on the outside, has a very calm um, demeanor, right? That that doesn't. It, it's not an accurate match of what they're experiencing and what they're communicating, right? So that's uh, genuineness is that matching of your experience, of how you see it and how you are also communicating that part of it, okay? So genuineness, what does it do? It promotes trust. It increases acceptance uh, of, of you as a counselor because you're open about your own weakness or your own situation. And it wins the confidence as a counselor to your counselee. So that's, that's, what, uh, that's what genuine does, okay? Um, all right. Okay, so... Um, from what we have spoken about, we said three main attitudes. We said um, empathy, unconditional positive regard, and um, genuineness. Now, remember, all of these can't be learned. You can't learn it in a class. You can, you do, it, it is a, like we said, it's a, it's a mindset change. It's a perspective change. It's something that you do with your own internal talk and how you express and respond to others will help you see if you are actually growing in them okay all right any any questions on this one before we move to the next part of it any questions we have another four, half an hour 25 minutes um so any questions if not we'll move into the next uh, next one Come on, students. Not acceptable. I, I just, why am I not sensing that uh, people have doubts? Come on.
Yes. No one has any doubt? OK, then we, we should probably have a live counseling session to see you know, if you all have understood everything, we can we can practice this a little bit more, maybe next class. OK? All right, I think we'll do that, because uh, you all seem to be quite confident. OK, all right, so let me just. OK. We're going to be uh, moving into the next chapter, which is, um, sorry, um, yeah, which is chapter four. And uh, chapter four is what we're looking at is um, the counseling process. But before we get into the counseling process, we'll take the next half an hour to just uh, look about the frame of reference. What is the frame of reference okay so we we did say that the, the what is the role of a counselor the role of a counselor as we spoke of it was that a counselor is a facilitator uh, someone who is able to understand the situation and the feelings that is associated with it someone who initiates and reinforces action and someone who equips another to help themselves okay so this is what you as a counselor do I'm going to go to the, remember the first class, we spoke about a lady by name Susan. And I'd asked you all to write down what your first responses was. OK? And uh, if you all have your responses at hand, I don't want you to read that out. I want you to rework your response from what we uh, spoke about in this last class about genuineness, empathy, unconditional positive regard, OK? In the light of that, I want you to write down the first thing you will say that that is empathic, empathetic to her that shows unconditional positive regard, OK? So can you please take two, one minute to put down your answers? You can either put it on the chat or you can uh, you can unmute and speak. OK, I'm waiting for responses. OK, thank you, Nina. So she's written, what you're going through must be difficult. OK, lovely. Great. Sri Radha, you can talk to your husband directly about your side. Tell him all your concerns. Because if you don't tell what you're facing, he won't be able to understand. OK. Sri Radha, empathy. I want you to use empathy. This is a solution. Right? You, you're, you're telling her what she needs to do. Um, we are looking at how we can empathize. So can you rewrite your response? Empathy, how do you empathize? How can you unconditionally? So over here, when you say you can talk to your husband directly about your side, you have, uh, what, what you've done is you've given her a way to solve her problem. Right now, she needs you to understand what she's feeling. OK? So can you rewrite that again, please? OK, others? Anand, Anthony, Chira, Jackin, Nina, Santosh, Prabhu, 
friends, Ravali, Shivkumar. Okay, Anand's written. So sorry to hear that, Susan. It must be hard for you. Sorry, I lost that. It must be hard for you, but don't take quick decisions. Okay, all right. It feels unfair not having your own space and freedom. Excellent, very good. Yeah, good. Okay, the rest. Uh, Jackin, this is really a difficult situation that you're facing. Okay, good attempt. Uh, Anthony, I understand what you're going through right now, but you need to be more transparent. Okay, so Anthony here also, the second part of it, but you need to be more transparent. There again, we have gotten to a place of advice, okay? So the first part is just coming to a place of understanding. So again, when you keep... Um, there's nothing there's nothing too wrong in saying i understand but nevertheless it's not as effective when you just say i understand what do you understand what you need to look at what is the emotion that this person is going through can you all tell me what is the emotion she's going through what do you sense is the emotion what's the emotion uppermost emotion Uh, can you hear, ma'am? Yes, I can hear. Uh, the place of uh, someone is not trusting her, whom she sh like they should trust, mm. and uh, also of uh, always being around, like uh, some person of always checking on her. It's like you know, not Good. believing me. Good. Okay. So great. So you, uh, I think even. Uh, 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 Anthony's written lack of trust. Yes, so she's she feels a lack of trust. Is that lack of approval? Very good. Uh, someone said frustration. Okay, uh, um, and uh, Prince, you've said uh, you said someone who she's not feeling freedom. So she feels probably uh, suffocated, or she feels unsafe. She feels um, uh, you know really really uh, fed up. She feels at the end of her rope. Do you see that this, these are the feelings? Okay, someone's written hurting. Uh, but after hearing it, I feel it's hurting. Okay, right. So do you see that we should not move past that? So look for the feeling. Look for the feeling. So even when you say, I understand, it's something that we casually say without really thinking about when, when Susan is saying this, what is she feeling? What is going on inside of her that's making her come to you, right? So more than saying, I can understand or I understand what you're going through, bring about the feeling, right? Or like uh, I think Radha wrote, if you're not able to pick up what the feeling is saying, you know, I'm trying my best to understand what you're feeling. It appears to me that it hurts. Could you share or help me understand what you're feeling a bit more? So then she'll say, you know, it's so suffocating or it's so um, uh, it, it's so claustrophobic. It's, it's a very dark space. She will build on that. And that's what actually helps her to come to terms with what she's going through. OK, so so remember that when someone is talking to you to move into their frame of reference which is what we're going to look at it's important to understand what they're feeling now going through the responses uh you know it's important to rate what your responses are so some of your initial responses or the responses that came up especially where there is advice or where there is um, you know, where there isn't too much of a depth of what they're feeling, it can be an ineffective response. So let's look at some ineffective responses, okay? Some ineffective responses is, what has made you feel this way? Or why do you quarrel like that? You must be patient with him and love him. That is an extremely ineffective response, okay? Because you've made a judgment that she's not patient and that she doesn't love him, okay? Or tell me, were you really in love when you got married? Here you're questioning her judgment, whether she really liked this person when she got married. Okay, that's not that's not a place for me and for you and me to do that. 
or maybe you should try other ways like making his favorite dish to please him you've gone way beyond uh, helping because you're trying to minimize her feelings by making a biryani for him okay it doesn't work next you're saying that your marriage is not going well your relationship with your husband has deteriorated he does not seem to appreciate anything you do you're doing the best you know but without success in satisfying him so this is a little bit more longer but uh, again it does not come if you look if you see that response there's no feeling in it right it's it's paraphrasing what she's she's going through the sixth one you feel hurt because your husband is disappointed in you now that becomes a more res a response that's empathetic it says because she's feeling hurt and she's disappointed um, i mean she she feels that her husband is disappointed in her right and so that becomes maybe an effective response to really understand and figure out a lot more okay now if you need to bring change you must as a counselor uh, it is up to you to bring about that help in bringing about that change through your relationship with your counselee and one of one one what we spoke about last is your attitudes which is unconditional positive regard your genuineness as well as your um, empathy when you display that you're helping your counselee come to a process of learning of change okay that learning process is what we call as eua now this we will keep, we will go into much detail much later okay but i'm just introducing this to you what does eua mean e is exploration when your attitude and uh, attitude towards your counselees of these three that we spoke about you're helping your counselee come to a place of self exploration you you helping them come to a place of self understanding their problem and third is moving them into action okay so eua is exploration self exploration u is understanding that is they begin to understand where they are at in their problem and from there you're helping them move into a place of action okay so how do you bring about change your attitudes which we spoke about empathy positive regard and genuineness it facilitates the learning process in the counseling so what is self exploration what is going wrong you're helping them see what is going wrong not just in their situation but what they are doing to contribute to a problem right now remember whenever someone comes to you for counseling you're not attempting to change the husband or the wife or the uh, the people outside you're helping them to look into how they may be contributing to the problem that they have okay so that's what you're doing you're looking at what's going wrong and why when you look at what's going wrong they come to a place of drawing insights into their problem by looking within themselves what about me is creating the situation as it is or what about me needs to be changed so that my situation can can get better your counselee only has the control over their lives not over the lives of somebody else so what are you doing is to help them to come to awareness about what needs to be changed in them okay so that's understanding and once they have understood you move them into the next phase of action where they're going to work on different ways to change their situation okay now this we will come into much later and in depth as we learn the skills but in order to do this how will you bring your counselor to this process of exploration understanding and awareness it is by entering into the frame of reference of your counselee okay now what is a frame of reference the frame of reference is so think of it like this you know um you have your house here and your neighbor's house is on the other side if you want to see the road from their house you can't sit in your house and see the road what do you have to do you have to go 
into their house and see the road the way that they can see it. Because the way that you can see your road is very different from the way that they can see your road. Okay, now this I've given you a very practical understanding. And that's exactly what frame of reference is. The way in which your counselee sees their problem is the way that you also need to begin to see, right? So the way in which the counselee sees themselves in relation to whatever is going on around them, you can see that only if you enter into their frame of reference. So in short, it is walking in their shoes, seeing through their eyes, getting in their skin, feeling from their heart. That doesn't mean, you know, you take their shoes and walk or you get their skin. That's, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a literal sense that we're talking about. We're saying how you get into their world and see life from the way that they see it or see their problem from the way they see it or see themselves from the way that they're able to see. So think of this uh, um, example that any time you want to see, let's say, a, a shop that is in between your house and your neighbor's house, if you want to see it the way your neighbor sees it, you cannot see it from your house. You have to go into your neighbor's house and look at it from them. That's exactly what we're also doing when a person comes to you. Okay. Now, what is the frame of reference? Now, there are two kinds of frame of references. All right. One is an external view, and one is what we uh, uh, what's an internal view. The ex external view of the frame of reference and the internal view of the frame internal frame of reference. The external view is. Um, and these are put it into in two lines. It's your view of you and my view of me. So an external frame of reference is the way that you are seeing me and the way that I am seeing you. All right. And this uh, this becomes external because what happens is you're looking at it from your glasses or your <laughs> your perspective. Right, I'm looking at you from the way that I see the world. Like, for example, about Susan. I'm looking at Susan's problem from the way that I think her problem is. I'm not seeing her problem from the way she is seeing her problem. Right? Or um, maybe I'll give you a, a, another quick example is I, I say, you know, um, I, I'm saying it's, it's, uh, um, trying to get a good example. Um, yeah, so I'm saying, uh, you know, it's very hard for me to study math. I'm telling you, it's very hard for me to study math. And you're saying, you know, if you want to study math, you should practice a lot, go for tuitions and uh, uh, one more thing, you know, whatever, you give another advice. The way that you have seen my math problem is the way that you have seen the math problem if it was your problem, All right? So that's an external view, external frame of uh, reference. That is, I am seeing your problem from the way that I have, I know of it. Or my view of you is the way that I see you from the way that I understand things. But an internal frame of reference <laughs> is the way that I see myself and the way that you see yourself. So the way that I see a math, you know, math as a difficulty is very personal to me. And the way that you see math as a difficulty is very personal to you. Right. So these are two different frame of references, an external as well as an internal frame of reference. Is this clear? If not, I need to explain this once again. So is it clear to you all or would you like me to explain it again? Uh, is the class all there? Is everybody in the class or everyone's going to sleep? Okay, Ravali says clear. Anybody else? I hope it's clear. Okay, all right. So if that's clear, let's move on. Okay, so when... when uh, uh, did I take off the... 
Oh, sorry, I've taken off the um, presentation. Sorry, can you just put that again? Okay, so we were talking about these two frame of references, the external as well as the internal frame of reference. Now, in counseling, your frame of reference should be this. I understand or I am beginning to learn about your view of you. So what you're doing is you are moving away from the external frame of reference and moving into knowing what, how do they see their world? So that's what I said. I'm moving away from my house and going into her house and looking at the problem from her house. An external view would be I'm looking at the problem from my house. Right? An internal view is I'm looking at the problem of my own problem from my own house. But when you're looking at counseling, you're saying, I am coming into your house or your skin or your understanding and trying to see the problem from the way that you see it. I'm not seeing it from the way that I see it. I want to look at it from the way that you see it. Now, when you begin to see it this way, that's when you will avoid giving advices. Because when you're giving advices, you're giving advice based on what you would do based on what may seem right to you. And that's what counseling is all about. Remember, we said counseling is not about giving advice. Counseling is about understanding, helping to understand the problem from the way that they see it and helping them find work and solution, facilitating that change for them. OK, so when you are responding from an internal frame of reference, what happens? OK, what happens when you respond from an internal frame of re reference? It becomes like a chain, a three link chain. OK, that is the counselor says a statement. The, uh, the sorry, the counselee says a statement. The counselor says a response and, and it helps the counselee to reiterate that statement. So let me give you an example. OK, so. Um, Let's say the counsel, uh, the uh, the counselor, counselee is saying there is no one I can relate to at home. It's like being in a foreign place. All right. So this is what the counselee is saying. So your response from an internal frame of reference would be, I hear that you are feeling very lonely or you're lost because you have really no one to relate to at home. Right. Now I didn't say maybe you should go and make some friends. Maybe you should go to the embassy and find the ABCD person to talk to. That becomes an external frame of reference. Maybe I will do that if I were in a foreign country. But what am I only doing? I'm getting into her frame of reference and saying, you know, is I, I, I hear that it's, it may be really lonely and lost for you because there is no one you can relate to. And then when I say that, that's when the counselee may say, yeah, that's so right. I feel so alone. I feel so isolated. Even in my home, I actually feel like an island. So they are exploring a lot more of what is what is going on. You know, as against, suppose when, if, if suppose, um, you know, I were to say the counselee was a counsellor, if I were to give a wrong statement or if I were to respond from an external frame of reference, I would say, Hey, it's after all your home. Uh, you know, nobody should be a stranger to you. Right? So what will happen? The counselee will be moved away from that conversation and say, oh, okay, but I also don't feel good at work. So you see that you have derailed the conversation in such a way that your counselee has lost the ability to really feel and express what they are going through. So when you respond from an internal frame of reference, you're allowing them to choose uh, to, to actually talk about a certain thing. But if you respond from an external frame of reference, it will influence your counselee
to block those thoughts and those feelings and experience uh, that they, they could have really, really benefited from. OK, so this is what we, we call as the uh, as, as the frame uh, as as the frame of reference. OK, uh, moving on. Um, OK, so what is it that involves the frame of reference? Now, this if you're looking at this diagram, the big C is for, you know, the counselor and the small C is for the counselor. So just to differentiate. OK, now we all have me as a counselor. I have my own culture, my environment, my experience, my education, my expectations, everything. I have come from that. And I, and I carry that with me wherever I go. So also, your counselee does the same thing. They come from a certain culture. They come from an environment, an education, an experience, expectations. They have their own experience and world that they come from. So when two people are interacting, we're interacting with all of this in our background. OK? The frame of reference would mean moving from one into the other. OK? Um, uh, so what I'd probably like to do is I think I'd, I'd, I have a couple more of slides to think, and I don't want to rush through this. So I'd like to maybe. Um, you know, bring about this the next class. We'll take the first 20 minutes to finish this before we go there. So all that I'd like you all to uh, just probably think about is how how can I enter into the frame of reference of, of someone else? And one way of doing that, as we said, is to empathy, to begin to understand what is happening in the life of the other. And that you do by tuning in to the people's feelings, OK? So I'm going to stop right here. We will take on the next couple of slides in our next class because it may take another 20 minutes to complete that. OK, but before we close, any questions? If if there, if there are maybe when you're thinking about it or when you're reading through your chapter, you have some questions, please put it for all the online students. Put, please put it on the stream. Write down your questions there and we can we can have a conversation there itself or for the for the other students, for the e-learning students, you have a space of discussion. You know, you can bring it up there. So please go back, read your uh, read this. Please don't keep it in for the next week and you know, shut your book and say, okay, till next week, I don't have to think about anything. Go back, read the chapter, and uh, think about questions. If you don't have questions, you know, I'm going to be quite upset because you should be having questions as you're understanding this. Okay, all right. Shall we just close with a word of prayer? Um, let's let me let me just close. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time for what we have learned. Lord, um, may we see and treat other people like the way you've treated us. Lord, with acceptance, with positive regard, with unconditional love, and also being able to be genuine. God, you desire that we come across to other people as a real people, Father, not putting on falsehood but Lord, to be genuine and real in our interactions with others. Lord, even as we learn this, I pray that this will become a lifestyle where we will learn to uh, empathize and move into the frame of references of others. Teach us to do that because that's exactly what you do. When we are broken, you show us, Lord, how, um, how, how you know us, you understand our brokenness. Thank you, God, for each of us. I pray, Lord, that you will uh, work this learning in our daily lives. Once again, we praise you. We worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Thank you, everybody. God bless. See you all next week.